Well, hello, and welcome back to Note by Note. This is Victor Perez, and today, this is not a live streaming. So, of course, for the people that is used to, to attend the, the live, uh, you are not going to see the chat. Um, this has been a recording, so I recorded this actually yesterday, which is quite strange to say yesterday because I'm actually recording now, but now is not your now. Okay, very very complicated relative thing of time. So the thing is like, this is a recording, but I didn't want to miss this uh, this opportunity just to keep with the, with the stream because at the time of this streaming, I'm actually on a review, on a client review for the thing that I am supervising that very soon the trailer is going to drop and I cannot wait to, to show you. So yeah, um, in any case, as usual, you can just drop your comments in here and I promise to, to, to read and to reply. Um, as usual, we are going to continue and have the, the usual program uh, of this, which is me comping and you watching and you can collaborate. And today, actually, I'm going to pick up from the uh, one of the comments that you guys left in in the previous video. So I'm going to I'm going to try to to play with reflections today. We are going to have a look at how to reconstruct reflections, how to play. There was another comment about how to use screens in there. That would be actually easier. But any, anyway, the, the, this is just an excuse for me just to keep working, trying things. Maybe they work, maybe don't. And whatever happens, we are all going to learn, me first. Because if it works, yeah, I know. And if it doesn't, well, I'm going to learn something that doesn't work, that is going to trigger maybe a better way to execute that or a different way or whatever happens. You know, ideas in your head are just ideas. Ideas while using your hands are going to become practice. And that is the, the whole purpose of, of this, is to practice, just to enjoy and do whatever we, we like. So, um, before co continuing with the uh, with the video, I would like to thank, as usual, uh, my friends at Foundry for supporting this uh, streaming, as usual, even when it's not a streaming and it's recording, they are always supporting me. And I'm very grateful because it's, it's super cool to have them here. So if you want to support me, uh, as usual, yes, I'm going to put it in the in the comments so you can just, uh, you know, you can donate me a coffee so you can buy me one coffee or two coffees or whatever if you appreciate this. Um, if not, the best thing that you can do uh, is to subscribe so I can, I can keep publishing videos because, you know, the main thing of this is that you guys watch it because if nobody watches, who cares about what I'm doing? So, so that's why I'm very happy if you if you subscribe. So I'm going to keep doing videos and, and just sharing with you whatever I have. That sometimes is going to be more interesting, hopefully, than others. But who knows? Maybe this is the one. Uh, so I'm going to start. Um, I already opened the, the script because I, I just wanted to be sure. Today I on the go. I am not in my usual uh, studio in London, I'm abroad uh, right now. So I, I just wanted to make sure all the connections and, and I have all the materials that I that I need. And it's super cool because I still have my all my minimum setup for, for everything. I, I'm, I'm using my laptop, which is the same laptop that I'm using in, in my studio. And also today for my reference monitor, instead of using the usual monitors that I have in the studio, I'm using the moving from from Wacom, which is super cool because it's super color precise, uh, and it's also touch, and I can use my my pen. So, yeah, it's a very good way of keeping an eye into the colors and everything, and also having a second monitor that is also uh, a Wacom tablet. So it's like yeah, it's yeah, I I just love it. So I can. I, I cannot stop talking about that, but now I promise I'm going to stop. So I'm going to keep going with the with the shot itself. So um, last week uh, we were talking about the lighting, the interaction of the lighting and all of that. I have in here a bit of, yeah, when, when the light was off and on, 
like the C. Yeah. See? So it was a bit of a reaction to the to the light in, in there. And then we have the reflections in, in there. Now the question is, of course, as you can imagine, uh, the reflections are going to be relative to the movement of the camera. So one of the main points that we have in here, and I'm going to I'm going to watch this this because it's going to be faster, and I'm going to reduce the resolution just to that. So if I go something like that, of course it's very small, but that is the actual resolution that I am rendering. I'm just going to put it like that. So I'm going to lose half of the resolution, but it's going to be good enough to understand, you know, the dynamics of the of the shot. And I I believe it's really cool. It's working very well. But the reflections are baked in the texture. Why? Well, it's because clearly this is a projection made from one photo. So for the people that maybe are new to this uh, to this channel, I was doing in the previous in the previous uh, the first streaming. I actually selected this uh, picture, and I just got this into a moving camera. Okay, so I just got projections and a bit of cleanup and stuff. So I got this. Okay, so that that is the principle. So I was creating a bit of geometry with a dome. Just to have a bit of the outside. So everything here is based on, on the movement of the camera, but the reflection has been baked in the uh, in the areas of the of the projection. So that is not going to react as real. So what should I do? Well, first of all, there is a boring part, which is you should get rid of the of the real reflections. But I'm not going to do that right now because that is the boring part and I can do other things and we can just work on top of that. Maybe I can just clean a, a bit because that is, I mean, it's going to be actually not that difficult. But um, what I'm really interested is in how to get the actual reflections. So for that, I'm just going to try things that I honestly, I don't remember, I try. So we can use the logic of creating a omnisphere of, of reflections. So it's just to catch the reflections at a certain point. This is very common with game engines, like for instance, Unreal, just to generate like static reflections. So it's like capturing the reflections at a certain point in the pace, and then you are using that reflection catcher uh, materials for the, for the surfaces. But I'm going to try something something else. I'm going to try to apply fully reflective uh, materials into the card. So now I'm going to generate something. It's going to be a bit weird because in order to create like more accurate, accurate reflections, I will need to create one car in a in a whole setup of textures. Yes, let me let me just explain the theory because this is conceptual right now. Um, for the time being, I'm just going to uh, deactivate the dome, which is in here. I'm going to get rid of that just because it's going to be difficult to see the, the rest. So the dome, by the way, is just for the out, I mean, for the far plane, whatever is in, in there from outside the, the corridor. So what, what I mean in here is like, if I make everything to be like a mirror, it's actually not reflecting any texture because it's, it's just going to be a reflection of a reflection of a reflection, but you don't have the actual reflection on, on top. So instead, what I was thinking is like, I can replace in a whole setup, one wall or um, different cards that are not going to reflect one with the other. For instance, I can make one reflection uh, pass with just those, uh, those two cards that are going to reflect this that is in, in front of them and this area on top. So that is the theme is like, we cannot catch 
uh, with the live reflection method, we cannot catch everything, which means we are going to require several scenes in order to capture all the reflections. So this is not very efficient, but it's going to be very accurate. So now you have to deal between efficiency and accuracy, because maybe you, are, you want, of course, the most accurate way for everything, but maybe it doesn't matter for everything. Maybe you just need to be accurate in the areas that are close to the camera, and in those that are far enough, maybe you don't need all that amount of, uh, you know, the precision of the reflection, because at the end, uh, we need to understand where the detail uh, is 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 needed. I don't need to tell you that compositing most of the times is cheating light, so it just needs to look real, even if it's not real. So that is the that is my point. So what I'm going to do in order to get that is to replicate this whole system of reflections with the with that is going to be the input so i'm just going to make this in here and i'm going to put it here on the side yeah and now i'm going to put this in there so yeah it's connected to the to the same yeah to the same thing let's just check that this is working yeah it is the same setup with the camera, it doesn't have the dome. And honestly, right now, I don't care much about the dome. Uh, so let's try, let's try to create the reflections for this wall, these two walls, okay? Because they are cards that are, I mean, they are not going to reflect on each other. So I'm just going to make sure. So uh, is this one, is one, so I'm going to put it here, and this is the other. I'm going to put it there. So the rest, I want to keep the, the same reflections and, and everything. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the image. Yeah, it's looking weird, and in here. Okay. So now let's put our reflective material. So I'm going to apply material, okay? And the material that I'm going to apply, that is going to be the same for both, is going to be a reflection material. So I'm going to create that. Again, as usual, I haven't tried this before. I haven't been preparing, I just opened Nuke and go, and by the way, I should save with a new version. So yeah, that is the point. It's like, I'm here just to try things, just to go and see what we can do. Um, and also to see the downsides and, and uh, upsides. So, um, uh, okay, the material, I'm going with a shader that is going to be a basic material, this one. I'm going to apply this and to apply that. And in the uh, in the material in, in itself, I'm going to remove the diffuse. I'm going to remove the shininess at all. Um, and I'm going to use full specularity. So let's see, because of course in here, uh, Nuke is not uh, displaying uh, preview of the reflections in, in 3D. But let's see what happens in here. So, hmm. it doesn't have any reflection of this, of course, because I will need ray tracing for doing that. So the scanline render, as it is, is not going to work. So. Let's try with the right tracer. Right render. So the camera uh, died. So let's, I guess, kill this. 
And now, um, AOVs, cameras, let's see. I'm not very familiar with the uh, with the right render. I'm not that fun because it's kind of slow. But as I said, I'm, I'm just going to try to use it for, for this. So, mm -mm -mm. this works very well when you try to apply an environmental light. So I'm going to apply an environmental light, which is, as I, uh, as I said, is, um, is like a radiance uh, map from a certain point. So I'm going to apply just to check that I'm doing things correct. So uh, this is in light, environment light. This is for the map. So if I connect this, I'm going to get an HDR. I have HDRs in here, HDR eyes. Um, HDR eyes, for instance, this or this. Or that. I guess this is not going to have much detail, but maybe it's going to start helping me to understand if this is working or not, first of all. So there is no reflection at the moment. This is the right render. Let's use the scanline render. Uh, then this one works with the scanline render. So, yeah, exactly. So with this, I have the reflection, the the thing that I that I said. So if I use this, this is just to to help in going through my mental process. Okay. So with this, if I have this plus, what I'm going to have is the reflection captured from there into my plate that previously I have removed the, the reflections. And I'm going to show you that. I'm not sure if I can do it in, in this uh, session, but it's actually very simple. It's just cloning. It's just, uh, remember, this is a static image. So there is no complications, it's just cleaning up a, a picture. So the thing is like, this is working with the radiance map, but it's not working with the actual reflection, the right render. Let's play a bit with this. So let me see if, no. Um, mm, I can have a reflection in here. Is this going to get anything? Well, let's put it in the RGBA because that is what I what I want. And no, there is no reflections. Um, let's create a new one. Reflection. Okay, so I don't expect this to carry any useful information, um, but let's try it. So layer contact sheet. The depth, but that was coming all, already from there, from the scanline render and the position. Hmm. I'm afraid there is no way we are going to capture the yeah. There is no way we are going to capture the reflections from the scene in that sense. Hmm.
let me see let me see what I can invent mm, I don't have renderman yeah I'm afraid there is no way of getting the reflections live so we need to create a reflection map something that is going to give me that what I need in there. So I need to regenerate this, this thing. This is a lap long. It's just, um, you know, the, the lap long is very easy. It's just like the world map. When you open the world map and you have all the, all the countries and, and it's just like a spherical representation in one plane. Okay, in one in one image. So what I need to create. Oh, actually, let me let me show you what I mean. With if you are not, if you are not familiar with the concept, because I have here you are. The world map is actually a, a lap long. Okay, so if I put this into a sphere, you will see that the lap long is actually representing the you know the 360 degrees and the 180 degrees in there. So this is exactly the lap long. So you can represent the whole space from a certain point, which is going to be in the case of the Planck curve from the center of the, of the sphere. So how can we create that? And that is going to be something that is it's a slightly complex, but it's not that complicated. So it's complex because it has several things, but once you have that, you can even save your setup. I don't have the setup in, in, in here, which is good because we can uh, create our own. So basically we need to create a, a system of capturing from the cameras from all, from every angle of the 3D world. Okay, so we need to cover the entire world uh, from a certain point of view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cubical map setup because it's going to be really easy to 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 calculate those. It's, it's fast and we are going to need the spherical transform. So the input in here you have like different ways of getting an input and different ways of getting an output. So it depends on how you are how you are going to generate what you need. So if I want a lap long, I can use, for instance, this cube map. So we are going to feed all the faces of the cube and we are going to, to generate a lap long as a result. So this is like the spherical transform that I'm using here. And you have like this axis, okay? So you have more axes in, in here. There are six inputs, like the six faces of a cube. Let me just show you. Uh, cube. Just because sometimes I'm not sure that I'm being very clear. So one, two, three, four, five on top, six on bottom. So we are going to create a camera, a, a camera setup that is going to cover cameras in all those six directions. Okay. So let's start with that camera. And I'm going to call every camera just with the axis that is looking at at the moment. So look, the natural camera by default is looking into minus towards minus Z. Okay, so we're going to put in here minus Z. Another camera. So this other camera, I'm going to rotate the camera and we are going to look into this gizmo. Okay, let me see if I can... Um, here you are. Can you see that gizmo of transformations in there, which is the orientation of the of the 3D space? So that is the negative Z. Now we are going to look into the positive X. So this is going to be plus X. And to do that, we are going to rotate 90 degrees the other way around. There. See? So it's going towards that side. So this is going to be positive uh, x. Now, 
we are going more, so we are going 180 there, and this is going to be positive z, as you can see. See? So, positive z. Good. Now, let's go to negative x. So, we are going 90 degrees in there, so we are going to negative x. Okay. Now, if we put all those together with a scene, so we have all the horizontal planes from the same point, okay? And now we need to cover the top and the bottom. So we are going to get the first camera and we are going to rotate in the X, so 90 degrees. So this is going up. Uh, going up means positive Y. And then same thing, the other way around, minus 90. And this is going to be minus Y. So I put this and that. And I have now the cameras in all directions. But, but, this is not going to cover everything. Why? Because the frustrum of the cameras are not matching the end of one with the beginning of the other. So as you can see the frustrum, um, in order to make, to make a, like a, um, a test, I'm actually going to take the warm up. So, well, actually, no, warm up, no, <laughs> I, I need to read that, sorry. So, yeah, this one. So, if I put a sphere in there, okay, that's going to make a big sphere. Um, this big, so the cameras are inside. So what I'm going to do now is to capture, you know, all the, all, all the scene that I can, that I can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scanline render, just to showcase, uh, this is the object and this is the camera. Um, remember, because we're talking about a cube, every side of the cube is a square, okay? So I need the format to be a square. So I'm going to use a reformat. I'm going to connect this. I'm going to use this as a master format. Um, depend on the resolution you want, but it needs to be always a square, okay? So I'm going to use 1K just for keeping things simple. So it needs to be one square in order for the spherical transform to work. So now I'm going to put this and this camera and that. Um, this as a background, this is the scene, and that is the camera. Same thing, this is the object. This is my camera. And this is my format. So again, this is my camera. This is my object. This is my background. And the last one, this is my object. This is my camera and this is my background. Just to make things easier, I'm just going to hide the inputs in there. And I'm going to call this review. Cubical map setup. Okay. So another thing that you can do 
just in order to see clearer what you are doing and that is something that I like is like try to mimic also the colors of the axis because that is going to help you to understand at least which camera in are you looking at and and you know it's it's never too much clarity there is no such thing as too much clarity so I'm going to call in here and this is the positive so is red the negative is the contrary of red which is cyan and z is going to be this is negative z so is z let's go for z is going to be blue the contrary of blue is going to be and i'm going to make it more you know um, a clearer blue so this is the positive which is blue negative is going to be yellow something like that um positive y is going to be green negative y is going to be magenta so I just changed the color in here, but I also want to see the colors in there. So I'm just going to bring the colors in there as well. Just by doing that, you are using the same color of the scene, I mean of the script into the 3D scene, as you can see right now in there. So with this, it's just, remember, it's just in order to make things clearer. Okay, so it's going to be easier at least to understand because if not, it's just going to be a bunch of lines. And right now I know that this is the positive uh, X, this is the negative X. So it's easier to understand what you are looking at. Okay, so this is uh, the scan line render. So this is what is capturing. If I put all those images together, so this is going to be positive X. This is going to be uh, negative x. This is going to be positive z. This is negative z. This is negative y. And this is positive y. So this is my warm map. And as you can expect, it's not working. Why? Because as I said before, the frustrums of the of every camera the first string just to be clear is this pyramid these lines these lines that are delimitating what area of the 3d space you are actually capturing or projecting depending on the of the sense but this is that inside that those lines the image is appearing okay so that is the first room so even the word frustrated, when you are frustrated is because you are constrained in a setup that you are not happy, for instance. So that is being frustrated. Well, the all images are frustrated naturally, so it is normal. So in here, um, what we need to do is just to set up the frustration of the, of the cameras. And there is a very particular set of settings that you need to know by memory because it's not, uh, it's something that you need to learn. So in the projection, you need to use a focal length of 45 and we are going to use a horizontal aperture of 90 degrees and 90 degrees in here. Okay? So is that is that simple? So same in here for everyone. 45, 90 and 90. Here 45, 90, and 90. I can have also a Python script for doing this, but there is a trick. It's like I'm saying so many times that I'm sure you are going to learn. 45, 90, 90, it's so easy. It's just 45 is half of 90, and then 90, because it's 90, like a square angle. So it's just remember that. 45, 90, and 90. I'm sure by the end of this session, if something you are going to get is going to be 45, 90, and 90, okay? Now, 
if you look at the scene altogether, you're going to notice that if I'm going far, 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 and you can see all the frustrum, look at the frustrum. I'm going to remove the grid right now. Um, here we go. See? Now all the frustrums are completely merging perfectly one with the other. See? So this is actually an omni camera. So it's a camera that is capturing the whole world, okay? Like the Insta360, <laughs> for instance, that is another system uh, with two fish eyes. In here, we have a cubic camera setup. So it's just a cubic, uh, a cubic disposition. So if I now put this spherical transform, you're going to see that the world map is going to be perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. There is only one thing that probably, I hope, you are noticing, which is is mirror. Why? Well, it's, this one is very easy, because actually we are capturing the lap long from inside. So you are actually seeing from inside out. So that's why your uh, lap long is actually inverted. And this is something to keep in mind, because you want the reflections to be reverted. So you need to invert the original. So instead of inverting there, it's mirroring. So it's horizontal mirroring. And here you are. So now with this, you have a perfect reconstruction in the 3D space of this. No signs of overlapping or, yeah, in, in there, but this is because of the resolution. So what I'm going to do is I, I can just go as heavy as I want with, with the thing. As far as this is going to be square, it's always going to be at least with the same ratio. Okay, so this is the point. If we go from here to there, to here, you're going to see that the resolution, of course, in here. So it's all about the resolution of the individuals in, in there. Of course, this is just a, a way for you just to understand the reconstruction, but if you want to create uh, from the cubical camera setup, from the 3D, this is the, the way of, of doing that, but you can do also the other way around. We can just create, from the lat long, we can create a cubed map. So from here, I can just place in that, and this is going to show me, you know, the all the faces of the cube map, or the rectilinear, which is going to be if I replicate 45, 90, 90. See, you have again the same the same ratio. So that is the that is the place. So the spherical transform is just to go from one to another uh, format, just for for replic replicating that uh, spherical thing. Now, instead of using this sphere, now what I want is to generate from this thing. Now I'm going to place my camera on a certain position, but oh, how can I'm going to move all those cameras? Very easy, access. Now we are going to connect all cameras in there and we are going to move just the axis. So what I need to do now is to place in a scene this, or maybe better, this, and that. And the scene is going to be, yeah, here you are, in there. Now, let's move that to capture the reflections in a certain point. This point. And I'm going to center a bit in there. So that is going to be the point, the origin of my reflections. 
the point of the reflection capture in there. And I'm going to convert that into a lap long. By the way, the format in here, um, yeah, the format, I can go and say here, a lap long. So let's create an 8K lap long. Okay, so this is going to be the, the format that I want for, for that. I don't want, just, just to keep things easier, I'm just going to reduce that resolution. 4K is going to be good enough. And here you are, my reflection capture. I'm going to activate because now, of course, I want to have all the reflections, including that hole in there. So now this is calculating. Here you are. So you're going to notice that they are going to have areas that there are no projections in there. Well, it's because th there is no projection. It was it, it wasn't, you know, in the cards just to see behind. So what you are seeing in here is actually from behind the the positions of the camera is in there is in there and this is the area that is hiding behind the walls so i don't care much because the camera is going to be always in a position where i'm not going to see the reflections of those areas but what i wanted to call out in here is like look at how cool this thing actually is and i can put this into a sphere so you can see the effect yeah there you are the reflection this is my reflection map it looks very weird okay but it's exactly like it this is the area where the camera is well, this is the back, okay? So this is my reflection capture. So what can I do with this now? Well, the thing is like, remember that I told you that we need uh, for the environmental light, the environment light, um, we need a lot long. And we put that lot long in there. So now what we are going to do is we are going to replace that with this um be careful because this is going to require plenty of calculations so i'm going to save and now i'm going to get the the rendering in here and this is going to require a horrible amount of calculations so instead of having that live let's do something let's just bake it okay so i'm going to put this um here and I'm going to call this reflection catcher, but I'm going to use the, the same code. Um, so photo shoot reflection catcher v01 and ESR only one so i don't need to put all the all the things this is going to be linear i'm going to put render one frame it's going to take a little while here you are and now in here i'm going to use that here you are and I'm going to put in here even an alpha, because why not? Just to avoid any some transparencies that sometimes. So I don't need the right render anymore. I'm going to put it here. And here you are, a reflection. So 
if I put this over that, you are going to see the reflections. So now it's giving you certain reflections. Now, the question is, are those reflections right or not? No, they are not right. But I can ask you now something just to use your common sense. Do you know exactly what point of this wall is this particular area in there, you cannot even see the, the door. It's just so diffuse in the, in the orientation of the tiles that is losing a lot of information. So the question of having a reflection catcher in here is just to give some sort of life to that reflection, because when you are going to move the camera, everything is going to look quite static. So the thing is like with this, methodology, you are going to capture some sort of reflection. It's not the real reflection, but once you have the, the deformation and all of that, maybe you don't need all that amount of, you know, precision in that, in that reflection. So, let me see. Um, so this is the material. I'm just going to troubleshoot because right now I can only see this one, but not the other one. So why the other one is not giving me any reflection? I'm going to try something, which is to flip it, because sometimes the normals are just doing strange things. So let me see. Oh, the environment. This is actually very important. So the environment, the position of this environment should be the exact same position of this axis, because this axis is representing the exact point where the reflection is catched. So the reflection emitter needs to have the same position. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to make sure the translation, so I'm going to copy this into that, and this axis, I'm going to link it with this. I don't need to rotate or anything because you are not going to rotate. So that is the position that I need. So the environment now is placing exactly the same the same position. So let's see what's in there. Okay. As this is just getting the uh, is just the orientation in, in there. This is not actually making much difference for for this one. So let's place. Let's place this for all of them. So for this, I'm going to copy, it's just very, very simple. I'm going to copy all of them and replicate the same, the same for all of them, because now I don't have the problem of the other. So, I can have all the, all the reflections in the same scene, it would make sense. So I'm going to apply all of this, and now you are going to see what, what I was mentioning earlier, that not all reflections are going to look naturally, okay? So, yeah, this is looking quite weird. 
So with this, let me just check what is the point because I don't have the position in 3D because I don't, I don't understand where where I okay I was looking in the wrong direction so let me let me grab the the axis to see here you are this is the axis um let me see from there no okay i see i see what was very strange of course i'm seeing parts of the projection that are not meant to be seen from the camera like this one which is behind this this part of the ceiling that is covering the back of the ceiling um because i have in pain of course because i don't see that i have that that is going to influence also the the reflections which is is normal is it's part of the cheating in the in the light of that so let me just grab the projector that is going to be there i'm just going to try for the time being to connect this live let me see i'm not sure if I can move yeah is is not the most effective way of getting that now I'm going to connect him in here now I can see that certain reflections are making sense for instance this on this on the floor is actually reflecting the the top which is this area in there the front is actually reflecting the the opening of the of the corridor which is where the camera is placed so it's not visible at all i'm just going to try something something silly i'm just going to move the the lap long in order to yeah so yeah is working it's just like it's is having a strange effect so this is what i meant with uh, trying to replicate the the reflections with this with this position this capture is like it's not meant for for this because you don't have a real 3d scene so in order for this to work perfectly you should recreate also those areas that are not seen in the picture. So you should maybe even just copy and paste using UV maps. Uh, so it's getting slightly complicated. So that's why it's, it's better just to focus on a certain feature of the, of the reflection, just for instance, this wall, and then you try to play with, with that. So in any case, this is just a, I mean, I don't think uh, for the sake of this uh, exercise is actually very helpful. It's not, mm, it's not working very well also because of the, uh, of the materials, I mean, I'm sorry, of, of the geometries that I'm, that I'm using that are not, are very rough. So everything is very rough. Um, and I think even the cube is not having, uh, the cube that I have in, in, in there on top is not having the ability to reflect uh, as I was expecting because it's, it's not having all the, all those kinds of specularities and all of that. So uh, 
today I think we just went into a more theoretical way, but it's just because you guys asked me about how to how to capture this. Um, I think next week we can focus on, on a more faking reflections, which is going to be way easier for sure. And it's going to require less power, less complicated setups. But just to be clear, it, this technique that you have in, in here, this can be very helpful for other applications. For instance, a coverage map, for instance, to understand what areas of the 3D space your camera is watching. So we can develop the technique into, into other areas. But which is important is what, what we are doing in here. This is a real reflection. I mean, you are actually capturing the reflection in, in a physically plausible uh, way. The only thing is like, it's only going to work perfectly from that particular point that you capture. So it depends on the camera movement and, and all of that, okay? But I think it's actually, in any case, it's quite cool that you can position, you know, getting a, a, 300, a, 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 a 360 degrees in, in there. Um, you can also use this then to create lighting, environmental lighting or, or something. I mean, I can capture, let me see if I can, just before I, I finish, I'm going to try to get a, uh, I used to have, um, bear with me. A rabbit, which is a tester, is a very famous geometry. So let me see if I have the rabbit in here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe you guys are seeing this, and I'm not, but I cannot find the rabbit. Well, maybe next week when I'm back in the studio, maybe I can use a, a, a geometry in order to showcase the reflections over a, an object so we can uh, troubleshoot this. Because right now, honestly, I don't know what is, what is creating the, the geometries to, to be in there. And I just don't want to go over the time of this video just for, for showcasing things that maybe is just troubleshooting and is boring. But I'm not going to work during the, I mean, the, in the time of the next session. I'm just going to work in there. But today, I think I have already on my plate because being on the go, uh, and it's already very stressing. Um, and this is something that is really cool and I don't want to ruin just because I'm in a, in a rush, okay? So I think that is going to be all for, for this week. So next week, I, I think is, is, well, it's going to be live for sure. And you can ask me things. If you have watched this video for the, for the next uh, session, you can ask me questions about this or if you want me to develop something something more but i try to keep this under the the hour of the of the streaming the usual thing okay so that's all for this week um thank you very much for watching the the video if you have any comments or suggestions as usual place it in the in the comments and until next week this has been victor perez for note by note be happy and eat your veggies and be good, but not too much because it's boring. Take care, guys.